At ease. All right, my sister, he was actually teaching you right, sis. What we're trying to do is we're out here to teach our people what's not being taught in the churches. Right. Our people are being taught that it's okay to stay in sin. They, they're being taught according to that image that he gave you. All of the stuff the Bible tells us to do, we go against. And that's what we're out here to show our people. Like, he just asked you, um, are you trying to have a relationship with God, right? Right? You want a better relationship with God. You want to follow the God of this Bible, right? The black Jesus, right? Well, all it takes is keeping his commandments. Give me that, um, I'm going to give you a commandment right here. See, this is where, where we have to move our feelings to the side and, and follow what this Bible says, regardless of what it says, even if it cuts you. They call the Bible a double-edged sword. Deuteronomy 20, 25. Watch this, sis. This is one of the laws of the Most High God right here. Because were you aware that God had a dress code? Yeah, well, God has a dress code. A lot of the stuff that happens in our community, we don't even realize we cause it. Like our sisters, we're leading a single parent household. And we, we say all, and a, a lot of our sisters think ain't no good man out there, but then they don't ever question themselves, how did you dress to get that man? See, God gives us instructions on how we should carry ourselves to have a healthy marriage. Watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Three. The woman. The who? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Three. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So all of that cross dress and stuff is, uh, is, is God is against that stuff. God ain't with men putting on women's clothes, having your kids put on um. Have your um, sons put on little women's shoes and all that stuff. God is against that stuff. Right now the world accepts that and the world thinks that that's okay. But read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So my question to you is what kind of garment should I not have on as a man? I should not have on a dress. You are. What if it's a dress for a, for a man? You are 100% right. right. You are 100% right. What should I have on, sis? I should have on pants. Now, now, watch this, sis. Read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So if I should have on pants, what should you not have on? There you go. Now, my question to you, sis, is do you love God enough to follow that? Read. Watch, watch what God thinks of me. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Have you ever heard of that word abomination? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, how do you think God feels about abominations? I, I give it to you. Give me that in Jeremiah chapter 44 verse 4. I'm going to show you how he feels about it. And I'm going to show you what the end judgment of abominations are. So we can understand how serious your dress code is. Because the churches tell you come as you are, right? That's basically saying sin. Go ahead and do the opposite of what God said. God told a woman not to wear that which men wear, and the men not to wear that which women wear. Therefore, now you have homosexuals in the church. Now you have cross-dressing in the church. Now you have studs in the church. Now you have the effeminate in the church. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 4. Read. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, how do not this abominable... Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Hold on, that I what? That I hate. God hates those things that are abominable. And if you're doing things that are abominable, God hates those actions. It's called sin. Let's see what the uh, consequence of, of abominations are, sis, so you can understand why it's important for you to say, I'm never going to wear pants again. Not because I told you to, but because the Bible said, and this is where we have to change. This is, this is the difference in between what we're teaching and what the ch Christian church is teaching. Read that. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Really? But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable. And the who? Abominable. Abominable are those who commit abominable actions. Like what we just read. Women wearing pants and men wearing dresses. God called that abomination. He said they're abominable, read. Really? And murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn up with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. God said they're going to have their part in the lake of burning with fire and brimstone. What, what God tells our sisters to do, and this, is, uh, this has a lot to do with, with our households being out of order. Give me that in um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Because whether you know it or not, when you wear pants, do, uh, is a man able to see your shape? 
Yeah, he's able to see your shape. So once he see your shape, is he thinking about how great of a mind you have in your head? He is being lustful. That's why God gave us specific instructions on our dress code. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. And like men are also that women adorn them. That who? That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. God was very specific. Women should be dressed in modest apparel. Do you know what the word modest means? It's okay if you don't. Not pulling any sexual attention to yourself. Pants pull sexual attention. Even the, the pants started off just being pants, and now they're starting to make them where they're even tighter than tight. They're making them where you can see every shape on a woman's body, and you wonder why we're leading the single parent households. These are the things that God told us not to do, and because we did them, there was a, a reaction to it. God didn't come down and strike everybody with pants that have on pants with lightning. He made your, your household get out of order. He made men only want to sleep with you. He made you not get with the people that you um, not get with people who are godly men. Yeast infection. Yeast infection. He God gave he, he give you consequences whenever you're breaking his laws. Give me that in um, 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 Sirach chapter 2, verse 16. Understand, we have to learn how to love God. And loving God is keeping his commandments. The thing is, we're not being taught his commandments. Read that. Sirach chapter 2, verse 16. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 16. Really? They that fear the Lord will see that which is well pleasing unto him. Really? And they that love him shall be filled with the law. With the what? The law. God said anybody who said they love him will be filled with his law. That was one of the laws I just read you. It's pertaining to a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. There are many laws in this Bible that are not being taught uh, in these churches. They're not being taught when you're teaching yourself at home. But what we, what you got? What's that? The, um, the, the, the pants, the, there was a law. The, the commandments in the law, give me that in uh, Exodus chapter 20. Um, yeah, they, these are the things Moses came down from the um, mountain with. But they never talk about that in the church. They only teach you about the Ten Commandments. He came also down with the laws. Give me that in um, Exodus. You got it? 24 and 12. Watch this. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Check this out. Watch this. Yeah, and they, they don't even follow the commandments. That's why he was just telling you about the Sabbath day. They don't even follow the commandments. Watch this. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount and be there. And I will give thee tables of stone and a law. In a what? In a law and commandments which I have written that thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up. So God gave him, when he went up to that mountain with the Most High God, when Moses went to the mountain with God, God gave him commandments and laws. Now, let me tell you what's so special about them laws. Give me that in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. The laws are what, breaking the laws are what is sin. Whenever you break any one of the laws God gave us, that's what sin is. And God told us, what did Christ tell us? To stop sinning. To sin no more. Read that. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Read. Whosoever committed sin, transgressing also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's your definition of sin. Sin is the breaking of God's laws. Now watch this part. Read verse 6. Verse 6. Whosoever abiding in him sinneth not. Say that again. Whosoever abideth in him. Whoever think they abide in Christ. Christ abide in me. God know my heart. All of the stuff they teach us say in the Christian church. The Bible says whoever abideth in him do what? Sinneth not. What is sin, my sister? Breaking of the laws. What is sin, my sister? used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.